Cranbrook Academy of Art is where I did my graduate studies. It was a bit shocking, I think, at the beginning because I was the only minority there. This is in 1988. I just considered myself another artist out there amongst my peers. And I think it was difficult because it was the first time that I was confronted with my identity as a black male. My mother told me when I was like eight years old the complexity of what I would have to deal with. So knowing made me think I've got to build a thick skin. I've got to be able to operate in a world <laughs> that could work against me as opposed to for me. What do I do with that? I have been racially profiled. I'm walking home with my portfolio from teaching. I am pulled, surrounded by undercover cops saying lie down on the floor because the convenience store was robbed down the street. That has been my reality. Get it together up here. Psychologically, I have to really get it together. And I just have to get quiet to put it in perspective and to sort of not sort of uh, lash out in rage. Mm -hmm. And if I do, lashing out for me is creating this. All of that becomes the impulse to create. I don't ever see the sound suits as fun. They really are coming from a very dark place. The sound suits hide gender, race, class, and they force you to look at the work without judgment. You know, we tend to want to categorize everything. We tend to want to find its place. How do we sort of be one-on-one -on -one with something that is unfamiliar? 